So, as you might have gathered from the title, I have isopod enclosures. But um, I need to redo all of them last minute because I did not have what I needed and I'm really just not, not confident that they are adequate. Uh, first, however, I want to go fertilize my pumpkins. The isopods should be coming in either today or tomorrow. So I have a small window of time. My pumpkin plant flowers have been just like very capricious. They've been closing up on me a lot and I want to go outside oh, and take a Q-tip and just manually fertilize all of them. So, let's go do that. I forgot to do that, um, that content creator thing where I apologize for the construction outside. So I apologize for the construction outside. Um, we have two cube tips. I was just gonna do the pumpkins, but then, um, I have a wasp, and it's a solo wasp, it's the weirdest thing, but I have a wasp that does my cucumbers for me. He already did some of them, I don't know if he's done all of them, so just in case he's not poking around, I might also do some cucumbers. I'm not sure if you'll let me, but we're coming prepared just in case. My dog seems to have torn up some kind of wood on the stairs, so... He, uh, I mean, he got the spirit. He's trying to make his own little isopod habitat. It's not great, but he's trying. He's a dog. He don't even have thumbs, so don't be too hard on him. Pumpkin time. All right, hopefully you can hear me over the noise. Cat has been acquired. Now, maybe I'll be able to show you, but pumpkins have male and female parts. They do not, however, have the parts they need to communicate their gender identity. <laughs> maybe I should say something like that, but uh, it is true, they don't. They don't have a voice. Pumpkins can't talk, uh, fun fact. So let's take a look at these pumpkins, try and suss out if they're male or female. It's pretty obvious. The male ones go like this, and the female ones go like that. So, um, let's take a look at these pumpkins. Don't mind the cardboard in my garden bed, it's there to stop the overgrowth. This one is male. We're going to put one Q-tip, the one for the cucumbers, in a pocket, and then we are going to um, molest this plant, basically. Take its pollen out. Yeah, I'll show you guys the, the Q-tip when we pull it out. Look at that, you can't really see. I'm gonna have to focus it. I mean, you get the idea. It's yellow, it's got pollen. So let's try to find some female flowers and fertilize them. One thing I kind of need to be aware of is I have more than one type of pumpkin plant, um, but not too many. And these are little ones, they haven't started flowering yet, but even some of my big ones haven't um, started to flower yet. I can tell them apart though, I know where they are. So, bit of an issue, because this one is also a male. Um, not the biggest issue, I'll just grab some more pollen off of this. Absolutely goaded. And let's check this next flower, which is also a male. So, uh... 
Cool. Um, maybe this next pumpkin will have a female flower? <laughs> I don't know. I set out with the intention of fertilizing pumpkins. So far I'm just molesting male pumpkins for no reason. Maybe I really just don't know as much about pumpkin plants as I thought. Maybe um, the female flowers come in later or something. I really have no clue at this point. Uh, these milk jugs I used to start my carrots indoors and then I tossed some lemon seeds from just a bulk bag of Costco lemons into one of them and one of the lemons sprouted. So I am very proud of that little lemon. I had given up on everything in all of these and I was honestly just about to toss them all together and let them dry out in the sun or whatever else. and. Uh, then just reuse the soil, but I got a lemon instead. Wow, this was supposed to be about isopods and now it's kind of about gardening. <laughs> Let's check on this strawberry and it has been eaten. Excellent, fabulous. So, um, I'm fishing the other Q-tip out of my pocket. We might get attacked by a wasp. That'll be nice and fun. Um, It's harder to tell for these, it looks like. That looks like a male to me. Let me focus in on that. But I'm not sure, so I'm just gonna start poking them. Being very uh, careful of the little bugs that are living inside them and probably pollinating them for me, so this is, you know, not doing anything. But I'm just gonna poke them and spread everything around a bunch of times and maybe I did something. I'm not really sure. All right, um, I think all that did was obliterate a Q-tip. I now have a spider that crawled onto this leaf that just came out of my hair. It's not in focus, but that's kind of cool. Infinite spider hack, having long hair. I'm trying to find some of the cucumbers that are forming from the flowers to show, because they're very cute. Oh, here's one. You see it? Let me see if I can zoom in. Get in focus. All right, well, zoomed in but out of focus. There's it in focus and zoomed out. Um, so yeah, cute little cucumber there. I guess I should probably remember to bring the supplies up. This is some bark that's been baked and made the house smell divine. That was cringe, I'm sorry. Um, and then I've got some leaf litter, some charcoal, and in the freezer, I've got some topsoil that was sealed off to prevent air from getting in, suffocate any stuff that might have been in the topsoil, and then it's been in the freezer for a bit, just as an added precaution because, um, you know. We also have massive tubs full of moss. So I do kind of want to get in on that as well. Underneath it is just some microgreen stuff and seedlings and in those I'm also propagating some moss. Or trying to, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff to bring upstairs. All right, I better get to it. Oh, 
dry moss, wet moss. All right. you want about wearing white overalls to work with a lot of dirt, but this is some drip. This keeps coming undone. Still drip though. I've already got something on my pants. Welcome back. Welcome back, nuisance. Did you guys know I have two dogs? But well, only one of them is always in my business. Only one of them is always in my business. We've got charcoal, leaf litter, lots of bark and topsoil. Uh, we've got moss and more leaf litter, which I am going to be pulling out of these habit pests. Um, and then, oh right, we've got two bins of moss. We've got wet moss. It's just gorgeous. It's from the mountains. It smells like mint, honestly. It's just got such a nice, like, florally mint kind of smell. What does the dry moss smell like? I'll show you that too. Um, I'm gonna keep the lid separate as well. Here's the dry moss. Smell test. Oh, it's nice. It smells earthy, but it doesn't have that like nice, like very strong. I should have um, gotten my face in the frame more. That very strong earthy smell. Wait, no, mint smell. <laughs> so I've got some frog moss already in here. As you can see, it is a very sad and minuscule amount. You might also be surprised to know that um, I do actually already have an isopod bin of Perselio spinacornis. They're not native isopods here, they are invasive, but they, as far as I've been able to kind of research, don't have an impact on our environment. And so they, they are invaders here, but they're not harmful. They're just, they're just vibing. I'll talk a little bit about what I've done here. It is an abomination, as you can see. Uh, this is going to be for the party mix of Perselionis, uh, Pruen Pruensus, sus, the sussy boys. And um, yeah, I, I learned from some videos that they prefer to hide in things rather than burrow. And I have this leftover from my chubby frog, who if you are in my discord, you know, um, I call him Lil Oppie. His name is J. Robert Hoppenheimer. And he's chubby and precious, but he he doesn't like to hide. He likes to create his own burrows. So this became a detriment to both of us right away. And I, it didn't take me long to remove it from his enclosure. And then I thought, well, these isopods like to hide. So maybe I can give them that, but that will not be sufficient. So we're redoing these bad boys. Now I'm not sure if the isopods are coming today, but they will be here either today or tomorrow. So I should really get a move on with this, honestly. And stop blabbing so much. 
that I am easily distractible. What I might do is combine. I think I forgot to mention that I also have like a cocoa fiber reptive soil, plantation soil sort of bin over here as well. Um, that's what a lot of this substrate is made up of with some mulch too that's been boiled and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to start with Porcelio Levis. I'm getting some dairy cows and instead of taking out all of this, I will, what will I do? That is a good question. What I need is topsoil in here as well. And uh, from what I heard of them, they have a preference for burrowing. So I did have lots of um, dirt in here for them. I also heard that they are more soft bodied. So I made sure that all of the wood I put in was very blunt and um, not gonna be very pokey for them so that they didn't get injured accidentally. So yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move all of this dirt over. I'm gonna jump some, jump some, dump some charcoal in here. Then I'm gonna bury it on this side, then I'm gonna bury it on the other side. Keep in mind, I am going for a humidity gradient, obviously. Um, this soil has gotten very moist, which I am fairly concerned about, but I am genuinely hoping that the bark and the leaf litter can, uh, maybe even the topsoil can improve that, if that's possible. Is a layer of charcoal necessary? I don't think so. I don't know if, if anybody else does it like this, but I think it's generally to, it's generally good to use charcoal where you can, in my opinion. I'm stammering because I'm like super unsure of what I'm saying now. <laughs> Somebody's gonna be like, the abrasiveness of charcoal is gonna kill all of your isopod babies and they're never gonna reproduce and then all of your isopods will die and you're an idiot. So I'm kind of just uh, bracing myself for that preemptively because I'm what you would call paranoid and neurotic. I think that's a pretty good layer of charcoal. I don't know if I can lift it up, it's just gonna all sort of. Can you see it? Can you see it or is it all gonna slide over? Yep. Well, hey, that was easy because now we've almost got that part buried and then we can um, charcoal the other side. The camera is on a tripod and you have to twist it onto the tripod, so I'm not gonna lift the, I guess I could lift the tripod. All right, maybe I'll show you the next charcoal layer then. Oh my gosh, this substrate is getting up to the ventilation holes. This is a nightmare. This is a freaking nightmare. This is way too much. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with the extra because it's a bunch of stuff mixed together that's not gonna really do well. I guess I have spiders and maybe some wolf spiders or something would appreciate some substrate of something like that. As you can see, making the bold choice of pouring the charcoal right the hell in. Now it's going to be time to set up hopefully more of a moisture gradient with the topsoil. And I've got to check which side's got more ventilation. So it's this side here, the front, that's got more ventilation. So let's try and get that to be the, uh, the dry side of the humidity gradient. 
Why do you want a humidity gradient for isopods? If you know about isopods, you're probably already familiar. Uh, you want a humidity gradient because they have gills that they need to breathe and they need moisture generally to molt, but you don't want the conditions to be too moist because they're still terrestrial animals and they need a certain level of oxygen, just like we need a certain level of humidity and, and water, we need to hydrate. So we need dryness and wetness, just like isopods and pretty much everything to varying degrees. Uh, I'm going to grab a deli cup over here and remove some of the excess substrate and this camera is going to die but I'm going to remove some of this excess sub substrate. I'm going to get dirt all over the floor and it's carpet so that's super cool. That's great. We love that. I don't know why I'm removing it from the humid side instead of the Let's pour in the topsoil. It's very cold because it's been in the freezer. Actually, I want to do a moss layer, a dry moss layer, because that's going to help suck up some of the moisture. And apparently it's great. Oh, that's the cocoa fiber. Apparently it's great. Here's the dry moss for um, when you go to plant things eventually. It's just all so pretty that like, it's all so pretty. I don't wanna just bury it because it's just, it's so pretty. So, um, look at this mossy bark, it's so gorgeous. Can you see? Uh, maybe I'll bury the frog moss, just the generic reptile moss. I just split it up and start to... And I'll put the top so over there. Bury some more on the humid side. Cool top so the one closest to me, so I assume it's the one I was using. I'm trying to speed run this, but I think I mentioned I did not sleep very much. My brain is just really not doing its best. Y'all can't smell this topsoil, but it smells very, very nice. I think that's coming together, hopefully. Put some wet, wet moss, <laughs> some wet moss on the humid side here. This piece is huge. I might have to open that curtain back up. I don't want to split that, but like it's, it's very, very pretty. This is becoming troubling for me because it's really difficult for me to. mess around with nature, I suppose. I don't necessarily want to say it like that, but
all right, that's starting to look a little bit more like a livable isopod habitat, thank freaking goodness. We did it, Reddit. I think that's bare minimum achieved. Not that that's something I'm particularly proud of necessarily. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Just adding some of the dry mosses, making some notable improvements, honestly. And with the dry moss, what I'm doing is adding it more to the center of the humidity gradient just because the wet moss was literally picked up from my understanding like next to a river the dry moss was just from the forest floor i think i do enough leaves to share some of the leaves are from my vegetable plants in the yard and fun fact is I actually, while I was gathering them, found isopods on them, which are now in that bin I mentioned before. So gotta scatter some more leaf litter around, honestly. That's pretty leafy not maybe as leafy as it should be. I need to bake more leaves. Now is the part where I pick up the tripod. Yeah, that's a much better perspective. I'm gonna try and get myself out of the shot. <laughs> So let's move on to these absolutely depressing, desolate ones now that we've got that one out of the way. Oh my goodness, I have lost control of this situation. So it's been a number of hours. <laughs> uh, the camera died. So um, I don't know how much of that it caught. But I've finished up the isopod bins uh, and now it's probably time to give them a misting. I had a few hours of panic because um, I checked the tracking number and what it told me was that the isopods would not be here for like 10 days and it was supposed to be like one or two days but they are coming tomorrow so <laughs> i feel a little bit better because <laughs> uh i was i was distraught but let's um take a look at these new bins that are not horrible and sad and um, give them a mist. Button. All right, so I've got the tubs all labeled. And I'm just gonna pop these open. Uh, 
I'm gonna grab some dechlorinated water. And I'm gonna give them a spray down. <laughs> Now this is gonna be a bit tricky to get right, I think, because my native slash invasive but not damaging isopods that I, uh, I or uh, <laughs> JFK from Clone High ruined me. What was I saying? Right, they they actually like far, far less humidity. They only like 30 to 50% humidity, I think. They're Priscillio spinocornis. Um, and these ones like 70 and above humidity. So let's see if uh, we've got a good gradient, if this is all dry. And honestly, yeah. Uh, it's dusty, but very, very dry. Nice and dry, and it's not like we're even putting them in just yet, but look at this moss that was just cultivated near here in the mountains. It's absolutely gorgeous. I have a visitor. I have a handsome boy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, uh, yeah! Oh. Moss appreciation. It smells really, really pretty in here too. I was gonna label which side was the humid side for these as well. But I wasn't sure if I was gonna put it like on the top of the bin on the lids or where. And then I, I honestly, at the end of the day, I feel like it's going to be far, far more confusing. So that's all I gotta say about that. Let's uh, take a look at the isopods I actually have and give them a mist with some dechlorinated water. Just passing through. This is Oppie's setup. I swear these spider plants blew up overnight. He's a chubby frog, but he doesn't he doesn't dig up his plants. He just he burrows tunnels. I don't know if you can see them. They're pretty cool, yeah. And then he's in this one over here. Let's see if we can see him. Oh yeah. Just barely. If it's if it blah, 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 blah. if his water looks dirty, it's because um it's more like his tub. He he soaks in it. There's there's no way to avoid the dirt. I do rinse it off fairly often too, or rinse it out, I should say. And um he's nocturnal, so before he gets up and starts wandering around again, I'm definitely going to fill it up. He's got some dechlorinated water here at the ready. So he'll have his soaking pool. Don't you even worry about it. Isn't that right, my boy? He wants to steal this bark. He's like, free sticks inside. Come on. 
All right, where's the, here we go. I'm gonna see how, how fresh it smells too, because I might have to take out these carrot leaves or these carrots. It smells good. It's also pretty decently misted, but this spider plant ain't exactly looking like those other ones, am I right? Honestly, most nights watch these guys for hours. I'm pretty sure they're nocturnal, so I don't really want to go waking them, but maybe I'll move a couple of leaves and see if they start scurrying around because they're just excellent. I've heard them called spinies, or not spinies, spinnies. I call them Percelio spinicornis, but I think other people call them spinicornis. And spinnies does sound pretty cute. Oh. There was a teeny, teeny, tiny one. Tiny little bit of movement, but I don't know if I can get a whole lot of them moving around in here. Oh, well, there's one. I was trying to get him in focus. He scurried away. That's all right. I don't want to go making them uncomfortable or any more uncomfortable. I saw some leaves moving around over there. Oh yeah. I thought I saw a little antenna. Well, maybe I'll come back um, later around evening or night and have another peek because they're usually just zipping all over the place. I think between like, <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing to admit, but between, probably between 9 and 10 p.m. last night, I was watching them. It could have been longer. But, yeah, I don't know. Once they start, I just find it, I find it really difficult to disengage. I actually kind of had the same thing with just feeder insects. Just like, when I got a nice cricket set up, which is a story for another time, honestly. Um... I just, I watched them, uh, like endlessly, really. So I probably should have, I'm gonna be completely honest, white was a poor choice of clothing because of all the dirt. But also, <laughs> this is probably my first time wearing this in, possibly six years <laughs> and it's really really tight and um bending down is is a bit much where was i going with this nowhere uh i moved the sprinkler i probably should have shut it off because i keep forgetting about it but 
I moved it. Price is kind of averted. One of the neighbors came and talked to me about sprinklers. He said he used to have the same one and it's a pain in the ass. And I was kind of like... Okay. So, oh my gosh. This dog looks... This dog looks sad all the time. This is the other dog I spoke of. What's wrong? <laughs> Hello. Hello. <gasps> Hello. Oh my goodness, you are handsome. I have someone coming to pick up a cucumber plant at four. This is what time it is now. So, hopefully, maybe, no, that's a,